Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about another very important topic that is uh, contraction and uh, relaxation mechanism of skeletal muscles. Most of the students find this topic difficult to understand but uh, I am very much sure that after watching this video you will be able to understand all the mechanism uh, involved in contraction and relaxation of skeletal muscle. So before moving to the mechanism, first of all, let me tell you the structure of skeletal muscle. Okay, uh, here you can see this is a basically I have uh, drawn here a structure of uh, skeletal muscle and uh, these, these bundles, these, these are the bundles of muscle fiber and each bundle is called as uh, fascicle. Okay, and in each fascicle, here you can see there are lots of muscle fibers, muscle fiber, and one muscle fiber is considered as one single cell. So this one muscle fiber will act as one single cell. It will be having cell membrane. It will be having mitochondria. It will be having other organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, nucleus, and um, all other organelles will be present in this one muscle fiber. And here you can see one fascicle. It is made up of lots of muscle fibers, lots of muscle cells, you can say. And uh, here I have uh, elongated the one of the muscle fiber. Now inside the muscle fiber, as I have explained that this one muscle fiber, it will act as one single cell. So along with the cell organelles and cell membrane, uh, uh, cell membrane in, the, in this case, cell membrane will be called as sarcolemma. Okay, uh, along with the other organelles and along with the cell membrane, the muscle fiber will be having a sequence of some proteins, and those proteins are uh, called as myofibril. Myofibril. Now, myofibril is basically uh, made up of two types of protein. The one will be called as thick filament, and the other will be called as thin filament thick filament is made up of one protein that is myosin protein myosin protein okay and uh, here you can see this is uh, myosin head and this is myosin tail now if we talk about the thin filament Thin filament is made up of three major types of protein. The one is actin protein. For example, this one circle, this, this is one uh, molecule of actin protein. And these actin molecules, actin protein, they will join together to make a large polymer of actin protein. So the one is actin protein. The second is tropomyosin. Tropomyosin will be present over the actin protein like this. Tropomyosin. Okay, this green color is this green color protein is basically a tropomyosin protein. Okay. Uh, tropomyosin protein will cover the active site of actin protein. This actin protein it will be having some active site okay a site active site this active site is responsible for the attachment of actin molecule with myosin molecule okay for example this is myosin now this myosin head will attach with this active site of actin molecule but during relaxation stage when there is no stimulus for the contraction what will happen this tropomyosin tropomyosin protein will cover this active site it will cover this active site of the actin protein so it means without stimulus during the relaxation stage this tropomyosin will not let this actin protein to get attached with the myosin head 
so if there is no attachment between actin and myosin head the contraction of skeletal muscle will not take place clear so the one protein tropomyosin uh, will basically block the active site of actin molecule there will be another very important protein will be present and this protein is called as troponin troponin now this troponin protein is basically calcium is having a calcium binding site in uh, when we will talk about the mechanism of contraction we will see that when the calcium will bind calcium ion will bind on the uh, troponin this tropomyosin will raise up and it will expose the active site of actin to myosin and when the active site will be exposed to the myosin head the process of contraction will take place so it means calcium will bind on the troponin 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 will cause the uh, conformational change in the tropomyosin and after the conformational change the active site active site on the actin protein will get exposed to the head of myosin protein so once this active site will be exposed to the active site of myosin the process of uh, contraction will be taken place the detail of this mechanism will be discussed in the later part of the video okay so stay with me so this was basically all about the structure okay and uh, these proteins actin and th thin filament and thick filament they are present in the uh, myo uh, muscle fiber or muscle cell and they are called as basically myofibrin i have explained that inside the muscle fiber all other organelles will be present but we know that this muscle fiber uh, the muscle fiber of skeletal muscle is basically a multinucleated so nucleus will be more in number okay it's they will not all be there will not be only one nucleus there will be more than one nucleus present in the muscle fiber clear and one more thing we know that uh, the skeletal muscles is a striated muscle so what do i mean by striated muscle striated muscle mean that there are continuously light band dark band light band dark band light band and dark band how these light and dark bands are being made inside the muscle uh, fiber i will explain right after uh, some time and you will get the clear cut idea about the light and dark band obviously these thick and thin filaments are basically responsible for the dark and the uh, light band but you will get the clear cut concept after some time so this because of these uh, myofibril because of these thick and thin filament the light and dark band are present on the muscle fiber and because of uh, this uh, as they uh, these uh, myofibril are present in all the muscle fiber so light and dark band will be present on all the uh, muscle fibers and these muscle fibers are present in the fascicle so we know that these muscle fiber will be present on uh, these light and dark band will express on the fascicle and vas as well and ultimately they will present on the muscles okay now now let's talk about how uh, these light and dark bands are formed again i will repeat bundle of muscle fiber and this is one muscle fiber and inside the muscle fiber we know that myofibrils are present now what are myofibril we ha i have talked about that myofibrils are basically uh, made up of two types of protein thick and thin filament how these thick and thin filament are arranged this basically uh, uh, is the reason for expressing uh, light and dark band on the muscle fiber so the arrangement of these protein uh, is shown in the in, in this picture here you can see here you can see this is a thick filament this is a thick filament okay uh, some of the thick filaments are having arrangement like this that their head is attached with uh, is exposed to this thin filament and some of the 
thick filament are arranged in such way that there is their head is exposed to this uh, this thin filament okay and from the center these uh, both these uh, myosin molecules are joined with each other okay and the point where both of these uh, myosin molecules joined with each other this point is called as m line m line okay and here you can see these are the thin filament it, uh, now now let me uh, tell you about the bands dark band and light band and the distance between one and two other end of one thick filament is called as a band so this is the a band and the distance between uh, one end of one thick filament to the uh, other end of other thick filament is called as i band i band okay so here you can see this is the a band all this band is a band and this band is basically i band the a band is called as is, is considered as dark band and this i band is considered as light band okay and this uh, dark band light band dark band light band it will appear on the muscle fibers like this okay uh, light band dark band light band dark band light band dark band in this way uh, th uh, these band will appear on the skeletal muscle clear now this line between the thin filament this is a thin filament this, this is the thin and this uh, uh, z uh, this line between the thin filament is called as z line or z line z line or z line similarly this will also be called as z line getting me okay inside the a band inside the a band here you can see some of the area is fused having both thin filament thick filament thin filament thick filament thin filament thick filament and here you can here you can see some of the area is fused thin and thick thin and thick thin and thick but in the center here you can see some of the area of the a band is all only having a thick filament it does not have any thin filament and this area is called as h zone so this area which only have thick filament it does not have any thin filament is called as h zone okay and let me tell you one more thing the distance between one z line to other z line is considered as one sarcomere one sarcomere so this is the one sarcomere this is the other sarcomere and this is the other sarcomere okay again uh, this is the uh, i band this is the a band and uh, this is the z line this is the z line so distance between uh, one z line to other z line will be called as sarcomere okay so in one muscle fiber it's not like that only one thin filament or one thick filament will be present there are many thin filament and many thick filaments are attached with each other and they all are responsible for the contraction of skeletal muscle okay so this is a basically arrangement of, of myofibril how this myofibril is uh, arranged and present inside the uh, muscle fiber one muscle fiber i am talking there are hundreds of muscle fibers are present and in one muscle fiber the proteins are arranged like this okay so for the contraction uh, not only one protein but all uh, all this myofibril have to play their role 
and all the myofibrillary present in each muscle fiber had to have to play their role okay now uh, uh, after uh, in uh, next uh, part we will talk about the exact mechanism of contraction okay now let's see what happened during the contraction and uh, uh, relaxation of smooth muscle oh, sorry contra uh, skeletal muscle okay now what happened so obviously we know that uh, skeletal muscles are supplied with the somatic nervous system so obviously somatic nerve fibers will stimulate this skeletal muscle for the contraction okay skeletal muscle fiber will stimulate this muscle for the contraction now what will happen uh, when the message from central nervous system will come impulse or action potential will come from the central nervous system to any of the skeletal muscle what will happen when the action potential will reach over there the calcium channel when the action potential will reach over there the calcium channel will open and the influx of calcium will take place and calcium will move inside the cell and when the calcium will move inside the cell calcium induced exocytosis of these neurotransmitter vesicles will be taken place and this nerve fiber will release its neurotransmitter its content into the synaptic cleft okay and once these neurotransmitter they will act on their receptor present on the post synaptic cell that is in this case is a muscle cell or muscle fiber now the action potential will be generated on this skeletal muscle as well and action potential start traveling the sarcolemma sarcolemma is a cell membrane of the muscle fiber okay sarcolemma and similarly this is a this all is a sarcoplasm just like cytoplasm of a cell one um, uh, the cytoplasm of muscle fiber is called as sarcoplasm sarcolemma and sarcoplasm now action potential will travel along the sarco uh, lemma what is basically action potential action potential is a uh, electrochemical change okay just by uh, moving some ions into the cell some of the ion out of the cell sodium will move uh, inside the cell potassium will move outside the cell so just because uh, just because of movement of these ion uh, this impulse will be generated and propagated and it will travel along the sarcolemma okay now this action potential will travel along the sarcolemma and ultimately it will reach into the t tube this is a transfer tube and this transfer tube is not present in uh, smooth muscle okay t tubules now this action potential will travel uh, with the help of t tubules inside the cell and once this action potential will reach inside the cell it will uh, stimulate these sarcoplasmic reticulum they are they are the sarcoplasmic reticulum now we know that sarcoplasmic reticulums are basically reservoir of calcium ion they are storehouse of calcium ion so once the action potential will reach to the sarcoplasmic reticulum the calcium channels will get open and all the calcium it will come outside of the cell into the sarcoplasm calcium will come out of the cell into the sarcoplasm now what will happen we know that this is a uh, thin filament actin protein this is a uh, here you can see is a thick filament okay now what will happen uh, let me draw the tropomyosin as well tropomyosin <coughs> here is a tropomyosin 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 you can see that 
ट्रोपोमायोसिन इज बेसिकली ब्लॉकिंग द एक्टिव साइट ऑफ एक्टिन मालिक्यूल एंड द अटैचमेंट बिटवीन मायोसिन हेड एंड एक्टिन मालिक्यूल इज नॉट बींग टेकन प्लेस बिकॉज द एक्टिव साइट इज ब्लॉक्ड राइट नाउ बट एट द सेम टाइम वी वी नो डैट देर इज अनदर प्रोटीन इज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट एंड दिस प्रोटीन इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रोपोनिन ट्रोपोनिन एंड वेन दिस कैल्शियम इट विल कम एंड इट विल अटैच ऑन द ट्रोपोनिन प्रोटीन वेन कैल्शियम विल अटैच ऑन द ट्रोपोनिन प्रोटीन देर विल बी अ कन्फर्मेशनल चेंज इन द ट्रोपोमायोसिन देर विल बी अ कन्फर्मेशनल चेंज इन द ट्रोपोमायोसिन एंड दिस ट्रोपोमायोसिन विल गेट लिफ्टेड इट विल बी लिफ्टेड अप साइड वैन इट विल बी लिफ्टेड अप साइड द एक्टिव साइट ऑफ एक्टिन एक्टिव साइट ऑफ एक्टिन इट विल गेट एक्सपोज इट विल गेट एक्सपोज टू द मायोसिन हेड इट विल गेट एक्सपोज टू द मायोसिन हेड नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द मायोसिन मालिक्यूल एज वेल नाउ वॉट विल हैपन लेट मी शो ऑन द मायोसिन हेड द ए टी बी मालिक्यूल इज प्रेजेंट ए टी बी मालिक्यूल इज प्रेजेंट ऑन ऑल द मायोसिन मालिक्यूल देर इज अर टू बाइंडिंग साइड ऑन द मायोसिन हेड देर आर बेसिकली टू बाइंडिंग साइड वन बाइंडिंग साइड इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द बाइंडिंग विद द एक्टिन मालिक्यूल एंड अदर बाइंडिंग साइड इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द बाइंडिंग विद द ए टी पी फॉर द बाइंडिंग विद द ए टी पी ओके ना वट विल हैपन फॉर द अटैचमेंट ऑफ दिस मायोसिन हेड टू द एक्टिन दिस ए टी पी मस्ट हाइड्रोलाइज दिस ए टी पी मस्ट हाइड्रोलाइज एंड वेन दिस ए टी पी विल बी हाइड्रोलाइज इन टू ए डी पी एंड फॉसफेट मालिक्यूल ए डी पी एंड फॉसफेट मालिक्यूल वट विल हैपन दिस मायोसिन हेड इट विल बी रेडी इट विल बी ready now it will it is completely ready for the attachment with the actin protein because atp had been hydrolyzed now atp had been hydrolyzed it mean at this time adp is present adp molecule is present at this time atp is not present instead just a minute now ATP is attached. ATP has been hydrolyzed and ADP is attached. Similarly, this tropomyosin has also been lifted up, and this uh, actin, this actin uh, is uh, the active site of actin has been exposed. Now the bonding between myosin head and actin molecule will be taken place. Similarly, uh, this ATP will be hydrolyzed to ADP. And now ADP is attached. ADP. Similarly, ADP is attached with this molecule as well. ADP, not ATP, because ATP has been hydrolyzed. Similarly, in this case, initially it was ATP attached. but after the uh, hydrolysis of atp adp will be attached okay now now this uh, myosin head has been attached with the active site of the actin now this myosin here is the m line now this uh, myosin that has been attached with the active side it will uh, uh, cause a power stroke it will cause the power stroke and it will move like this and similarly these uh, myosin head that has been attached with the actin myosin uh, actin molecule again there will be a power stroke and they will move move like this okay so after uh, when they will move like this 
listen to this point very attentively. When they will move like this, this, let me draw with some other marker. So I'm now I'm showing this myosin head state after the contraction, after the power stroke. After the power stroke, this myosin head will be present like this. Similarly, this myosin head will be present like this. And this myosin head will be present like this. Okay, because they have caused the power stroke. Okay, now they are present in this condition. Okay, similarly, after the uh, contraction, this myosin molecule, they will uh, cause power stroke in this way, in this way. So after the contraction, this myosin head molecule will be present in this way, in this way, but it is still attached with actin. It is still attached with the actin because actin has also moved forward. Na? So they have moved forward. They are still attached with the actin molecule, but they have changed their structure after the power stroke. They have changed their structure after the power stroke. First of all, there will be a cross bridging, cross bridging between myosin head and actin molecule, 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 myosin head and actin molecule. And after that, there will be a power stroke. So after the power stroke, uh, the shape of myosin head will uh, uh, will be bent it, it, like this. After the power stroke, its shape uh, will be bent. Okay. Now what will happen? ADP molecule is still attached over there. ADP, A, DP. Okay. And ADP, 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 ADP. Not ATP. ATP has been added. Okay, now what will happen, how the relaxation will take place or we can say that how the uh, other contraction will take place. For the other contraction, obviously this actin, uh, myosin head has to be detached first. It has to be, for example, this uh, myosin head has been, uh, after power stroke, its shape has become like this. So first of all, it has to, for example, this is the uh, actin. This actin, this is a myosin, this actin. Okay, initially it was attached over there. Now, after the power stroke, it has been uh, attached, uh, it has uh, become like this. Now, for the other power stroke, obviously, first of all, it has to go back, it has to attach over there, and it, it has to cause the power stroke. So, it means detachment is very compulsory. Detachment or relaxation is very important. Now, how this muscle will get relaxed? We need an ATP molecule for the relaxation. Okay, we need a ATP molecule. A new ATP molecule will come. A new ATP molecule will come over there and it will replace this ADP and ATP will be attached. This ADP will be displaced and new ATP molecule will be attached. This ADP molecule will be displaced and new ATP molecule will be attached. This ADP molecule will be displaced and new ATP molecule will be attached. So when, when the new ATP molecule will be uh, attached, when the, uh, the structure after the power stroke structure of myosin head was like this and ADP was attached over there. For the relaxation, let me draw the actin as well, this actin molecule, this actin protein. Now, for the relaxation, ADP has to be replaced with the ATP. So when the ATP molecule will attach over there, the bond between actin and myosin head will detach and again it will come in this position. This position is called as cog position. Okay. And again it will be the cog position and again ready to bind another molecule of uh, myosin. When it will attach with the myosin, ATP will be hydrolyzed, ADP will be produced, energy will be generated, power stroke will be produced and in this way another contraction will take place. Another contraction will take place. Okay. So this is the role of ATP as well. Okay. So we need ATP molecule for the contraction. Initially uh, there was ADP. Initially there was ADP. Oh, sorry. Initially there was ATP. ATP will get hydrolyzed. Attachment will take place and power stroke will cause the contraction. After power stroke, the shape of myosin head will be, uh, myosin protein will get changed. And now for the relaxation, new molecule of ATP will come 
it will attach over there when the new molecule will come and attach over there the bond between myosin head and actin protein will detach and actin protein will come into the original uh, cogged shape now this actin uh, this myosin sorry myosin head is uh, ready to get attached with other uh, myosin molecule and uh, uh, it is ready to cause the other power stroke okay now how the relaxation will take place obviously the one thing is uh, when there is uh, no stimulus the release of these acetylcholine let me tell you one more thing this neurotransmitter in case uh, in the case of uh, somatic nervous system and the case of skeletal muscle the neurotransmitter is, is acetylcholine so this acetylcholine is basically causing all these things so once the release of acetylcholine will be blocked obviously when we do not need any further contraction the release of acetylcholine from the nervous system will be blocked and acetyl will acetylcholine will not cause will not generate any action potential so the release of calcium ion will stop after that when there is no further release the one more thing is uh, the calcium will be transported actively 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 because inside the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum there is a high concentration of calcium so we have to move calcium from low concentration to high concentration so actively by by the active transport the calcium will be moved inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum so inside the cytoplasm or inside the sarcoplasm the calcium level will decrease so once the calcium level will decrease uh, the calcium that is attached with the troponin it will start detaching to compensate this low level of calcium inside the sarcoplasm this calcium will start detaching and also this calcium will also be transported inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum through the active transport and once this calcium will be detached now this troponin molecule uh, uh, tropomyosin will again cover the active site of actin molecule and once the active site of actin molecule has been covered the bond between myosin the bond between myosin and actin molecule cannot take place okay so this was uh, in this way the smooth muscle relaxation and relaxation and contraction will be take place some of the calcium can also be exported out of the uh, cell through uh, antipotter sodium calcium antipotter sodium will be uh, calcium will be transported outside of the cell and sodium will be transported inside the cell this transporter can also be they can also play important role in the relaxation and in uh, decreasing the cytoplasmic concentration of calcium in the smooth muscle so this is the mechanism of contraction and relaxation of smooth muscle i hope you like my video in the next video we'll talk about the contraction and relaxation of uh, uh, sorry this was the skeletal muscle in the next video we'll, we'll talk about the smooth muscle please don't forget to subscribe my channel and like my video and press the bell icon so that you may get notification for the future videos thank you so much take care